Every man understands you shouldn't be complaining about things you cannot change. You have to play the cards you're dealt. To be born a certain height and then to sit there and go, what do I do? Well, I'll tell you what you do. You become the best version of yourself, just like everyone else does. Nothing about the height is in and of itself enough value for me to be a valuable man. As a man, you build your value. You are born with the cards you're dealt. Sure, it'd be ideal. Look, I'd love to be seven foot tall. I'm not. So it's the same argument. If you're five foot two, you need to become rich, strong, and funny, and charismatic, and interesting, and witty. If you're six foot four, you need to become rich, strong, well-connected. It's the same game. So to sit there and complain about it is asinine. All of you have a handful of this. I don't think you understand that. You could have been in a car crash at four years old and lost your legs. Do you have any understanding of how lucky you have been? This is pure luck. There's no re there's only luck has kept you fully able body sitting there capable of learning and listening and becoming something. You don't really need to be that tall if you're important and rich. And when you walk in the room, you think when fucking Mayweather walks in the room, people give a shit. Fix that frame in your mind. You are viewing yourself as a short man. Stop it. Walk the fuck up and be the man. Why I think I fight. Do I enjoy it? No. Do I enjoy training? No. Do I enjoy cutting weight? No. Am I nervous? Yes. Do I think to myself, what am I doing? Yes. Completely. Unfortunately, it's one of those things you're either born with or you're not. And the only way I can explain it, to try and make it make any sense, is that if I'm not doing something which is either extremely difficult or extremely stressful, I'm in a perpetual state of crippling boredom. I can't explain it. I see other people live their lives and they're like, oh, I can't wait for the weekend because I want to watch this movie. Who cares about a movie? You're looking forward to the weekend for a movie? Looking forward to the weekend to get drunk? Like these things to me are so mundane. They mean nothing. And if I don't fight, if I'm not in a situation where I'm stressed or worried or concerned, I'm just perpetually bored. And boredom's crippling. If you're an intelligent person and you've got a good brain on your shoulders, you can't just sit there bored, you know? So most smart people take the academic route to avoid boredom. They learn, 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 but that's never really interested me either. Although I've always been an intelligent guy and I've always done well academically, it, was, it never really interested me. And then I see people climb out Everest or jump off buildings or do base jumping or the guy who jumped from space. People think, what's he doing? He's crazy. I understand that some people can't live normal lives. Some people cannot just function nine to five office jobs get done on the weekends. That is not for some individuals and it's not for me. So I have to find something which keeps me physically tired enough to stop me going AWOL and mentally tired enough. And I've chosen fighting because without this, when I'm not in training, I wake up every day and think, okay, what am I going to do today? It's 9 a.m. on Tuesday, I'm bored. Everyone's at work, I'm bored. And I'll end up doing something crazy. I'll even up drunk or, or on the Eurostar or, you know, it's just, it's just a random lifestyle. It's I'm constantly living for never ending entertainment and it doesn't exist. I think the only thing that could stop me fighting is if I had enough money to constantly entertain myself. Unless I'm a billionaire, I need something that keeps me focused and keeps me occupied. You know? The fighting, I have to train twice a day, and I have to train hard. And the stress, can be, the stress it brings in every aspect can replace fun, and my mind is occupied. It occupies me. It's the only way I can try and explain it. It occupies me, and I could never stop doing this even if I lost 100 fights, because I'm not built to live a normal existence. I can't do it. I couldn't just have a kid with some girl and sit at home and work a little bit and relax. I've never relaxed my entire life. I don't know what relaxing is, it's just not me. Do you believe that God created us? So why did God create us to struggle? Because if you don't struggle, you don't learn. God created us to learn and understand ourselves and understand other people and understand the world. And what did I say earlier? I said that you don't learn a lesson without pain. Mm. So you have to struggle to learn anything. There's only two ways to learn things, the hard way or the harder way. If you're smart, you can learn the hard way. But in my experience, 99% of the planet only learn the hardest possible way. If you want to feel happy inside yourself, and you want to feel content, and you want yeah. to feel stable inside of yourself, you need to live true to God. And I'm not saying you can't drink a little bit of alcohol or not party or not have a little bit of fun. You have to be a good person. Why have we been given life? I think we're here to struggle and to learn. I don't think we're here to be happy. That's why when we keep going back to the happy argument, I've always found that kind of frustrating. Yeah. When someone goes, oh, but I want to be happy. Why? Why? Like, I, why do you want to sit there and laugh? Like you're, you were happy your entire childhood. That's your happy days. You're allowed to be happy. That's it. Right. It's all over now, right? You have, you're a man. You have responsibilities. I think we're here to do important things, and important things are going to be difficult. And they're going to be hard. And you're going to get frustrated. But that's what gives you purpose. I think we're here to struggle. I think we're here to 
endure pain. Yeah. I think we're here to just see how hard we are to kill. I think that going through terrible things and living through them and, mm. and coming out the other side is one of the most fantastic things about being human. Uh, I think that it's, it's almost like once you understand what life is really about, there's no emotion which isn't enjoyable. The only emotional state which can be seen as detrimental is feeling nothing at all. But if you're sitting at home and you're feeling truly heartbroken, at least you're feeling something, right? And, and, and I think that's the whole part of being human. I, I think we're here to struggle. I think we're here to go through pain. I wake up each day and go, what can I attack? What problem can I solve? And, and look at history. Why did Genghis Khan wake up and want to conquer the whole world? Why did Napoleon conquer the world? Why did Alexander the Great conquer the just world? Mail. Just, yeah. you just wake up and just say, give me this, give me that. I want all of it. Yeah. There's an army there. They're really big. We're better. Yeah. It's intrinsic. You need to go and conquer. That's that's the purpose of life. I don't believe in the societal paradigms in which they have tried to construct this idea of happiness. I don't believe or subscribe to the way that happy and sad is currently un understood by the masses of the population. I think if you are anything less than absolutely yeah. distraught, you are happy. You're a version of happy. Uh, it's like saying gray is a version of black, right? No matter how light the gray is, you can still call it a version of black. And unless you've gone through an event, which hopefully doesn't happen too often, like the passing of a family member or something yeah. that's truly destructive and detrimental to your mindset, besides these events, which hopefully only happen a few times in your life, you should be happy. If you're not crying or paralyzed in silence due to the absolute magnitude of a detrimental circumstance or the absolute magnitude of a negative event, then you are a version of happy. So I am always happy is the short answer. I don't believe in not being happy. I don't believe in not saying to myself, I'm happy. I'm always a version of happy. And this chasing, this idea of chasing happiness and always being concerned and preoccupied with how happy you are is actually the biggest mistake that a lot of people make, I think, in the world today especially men who wake up and go, oh, I don't really feel happy, so I need to get happier. And that's how they end up down a yeah. hedonistic path of drugs or alcohol or chasing gambling, pleasure. chasing pleasure. I don't care how I feel. Yeah. I don't care if I feel happy or sad. It doesn't really affect what I do each day. I do the exact same things. I act the exact same way. I don't care. I don't put weight to the significance of the emotion. So I always consider myself a happy person, but if I woke up and I was slightly less happy one day than another, it wouldn't affect anything I do and I wouldn't put any relevance to it. I'm human and that's life. So yeah, am I any happier now that I have hundreds of millions of dollars than before I was broke? Not really, but I was never unhappy. I'm, I'm, I'm the same state that I was then, that I am now. I have work to do and I will do it. It's, well, also, there's no light without dark, and there's no joy without pain. You can't have a rainbow without a little rain. No matter how hard you chase pleasure and happiness, there's going to be dips and troughs in between. There's going to be come downs and downtrends, and you're going to have the juxtaposition between that time you were laughing your head off and acting giddish like a child, and the time that you feel depressed as such. And I think it's much better to just adopt a very disciplined, stoic mindset. I'm always the same base level of happy regardless. If I lost all of my money today, I would be the same happy. If my net worth quadrupled, I'd be the same happiness. But as long as I'm alive and the people I, I care about and love are alive, and as long as I get, as long as God gives me the honor of doing my duties and providing for the people I care about, as long as I get to wake up and know that there's a whole bunch of people in the world who need me and I get to work hard to please them and do good for society and good for the world, then I'm, I'm a vessel of God and I'm happy. I'm happy enough to survive. That's, that's all I look at it as. I don't ever consider how do I feel. That doesn't cross my mind. I have things to do. I'm, I'm too busy. I'm, I have things to do every single day. I have very important things to do and how I feel really is not going to affect how I complete those tasks.